Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Lazabar. This is uh, the music of Eric Zahn. This is a uh, Kickstarter book I backed uh, a while ago. I forget what it cost. It was probably like eight bucks or something, maybe plus shipping. It wasn't that much. Came with this little sticker of the main character here. Yeah, a little noodly dude. Uh, the art in this is basically crazy. Now, the music of Eric Zahn. This is a Lovecraft story. And it's one I don't remember. Now, there's a good chance I have read this in the past, uh, simply because I have, like, two Lovecraft anthology books. So there's a good chance that I have actually read this short story. I just, um... What's the right way to put it? Don't remember! Hmm. Yeah. So let's just jump into it. Let's just jump into it. You can kind of get a feel for what the book's going to look like just by looking at the cover. Uh, the person who drew it is named Guy Thomas. You can see it's got a weird form factor. Here's just a very convenient uh, comic book. Oh, actually, let's get this comic book out here. I don't think I've showed this one on camera before. So, standard size American comic book. And then we got this. Ta-da! All right, let's get that back out of there. So, it's a horror story. Let's open it up, and whoa, that's a lot of text on the front page. All right. Okay, the music of Eric Zahn, H.P. Lovecraft Guy Thomas, Spiral King Comics, number 11, June 2019. I'm pretty sure I did get it in June. Uh, and, you know, like I'm reading through this, and there's some interesting stuff here. Uh, some personal updates about the author, or not the author, the, the artist, Guy Thomas. Uh, some background about Lovecraft and the story. And then anybody, da 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 da. So basically, content warning. Content is actually big at an individual. Okay. It's important to acknowledge this. Why? Why? Can't you just enjoy the story for what it is? Of course, the way this book is bound, text goes like way up in there, and it's kind of hard to read. In fact, I've just like permanently disfigured the cover now. I'm trying to trying to read that. So this is not the best the best binding. I so often find my favorite interpretations of Lovecraft's work to be those that could would have made the man himself very, very uncomfortable. Part because of this bigotry that I chose to make the protagonist a non-binary person. What does it matter? No, 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 just stop. Just stop. Whatever you're thinking over there, why does it matter? Uh, sorry, I had to respond to something real quick. All right, let's just uh, jump in. Let's jump in, because it doesn't matter. Whatever gender the protagonist has, it does not matter. We get all of this really ooky art, which I think kind of serve the, serves the mood of the story pretty well. Look at the moon. Streets, like nothing is straight lined. Everything's at funny angles. Like, even the door. Even the door. Uh, it's very German um, expressionistic. So anyway, this dude has moved into an apartment and it's not even unpacked yet. And he hears music. Beautiful music. And so he goes and he inquires. And I'm going to... This is a hundred-year-old story. So if I spoil it, uh, it's just spoiled. Oh, hold on. Before I jump into that, let's go back to the cover. This purple reads a lot better on camera than it does in person because of the way glare works and when it's in your hands. Uh, if Like, if I'm sitting right over here, I can't even read the title. It's completely obscured by the glare. Uh, but here on screen, that purple actually is kind of a very bold, strong choice. So the dude talks to the manager. Ah, oh, yes, that would be Eric Zahn. He lives above you. Would you like for me to talk to him about the noise? This is kind of hard to read. you got to go down and then up. And again... We're just going to have to hold the book like this so you can see this page. Well, perhaps I'll run into him. Perhaps. And so he hears the music, and it's beautiful and wondrous and strange. And he's like, finally, you must be Mr. Zahn. Your music's incredible. Yeah, come by and listen. And music Zahn, uh, music Zahn, Mr. Zahn doesn't talk. Excuse me, you must have a great view. I'd like to take a look. You guys taking a look? Mr. Zahn's like, boom, here's a note, here's a note. 
Why? Why? He doesn't want the guy to open the window. Why? What's behind the window? What's behind the window? What's behind the window? Oh my gosh. Should I not spoil this? Oh, I think I gotta spoil it. So, Mr. Zahn's like, hey, move downstairs. I'll pay the difference in the rooms. It's fine. Uh, just leave me alone. And maybe one day I'll let you back up to listen some more. So the guy moves downstairs, and... He goes up to see him. He goes up to listen. Strange, strange music. Mr. Zahn's there. Zahn, are you okay? Did you fall? Uh, what's going on? Zahn scribbles. Scribbles a scribbly scribble. But before he can finish his scribble, the wind. <laughs> look at what I look what's outside. Look! Look what's outside. Yeah, nothing. 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 He has to go play the music. Why? Why do you think? It's just a weird Lovecraftian story. Okay. <laughs> the like from an objective point of view, the art's not beautiful, but I think in the context of this story, this kind of art worked really well. The whole book felt like a German Expressionist film. If you've ever seen uh, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, you know the kind of art style I'm talking about. Everything's curvy or wobbly or seagogly. Nothing is, like, there's no straight edges, there's no straight lines. Everything's got a warp to it. It's twisted a little bit. It's like opening up and finding a dreamscape. I can easily see where a lot of people say the art doesn't work for them here. Uh, the art's a distraction. The art's not very good. I understand that perspective. When I first opened the book up and I was just flipping through it before I sat down to analyze it, I shared that opinion. Uh, so much of this book is mute. So much of this book is silent. It's just mood. This book is pure mood. It's not even explained. Like I'm, I presume in the original story, they go into some more explanation of what's on the other side. I, I kind of spared you the couple of pages where... It's shown what's on the other side more explicitly in case you want to track this book down and buy it for yourself. But I'm sure in the story they kind of go into what's on the other side. But here, we don't. There's very little exposition. It's all told through mood and location. And there's very few words. It's very spare in its writing. That's actually... That was, that's kind of a treat. It's very different. It's a very different comic book pretty much anything else I've ever read. And I appreciate it for that. Uh, absolutely no regrets about buying it. Absolutely uh, no regrets about anything related to this book. It was an interesting, somewhat challenging, thought-provoking read. And uh, I feel really artsy saying that kind of stuff. So, whatevs. You all have a great day. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time. And until then, you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.